Hello all, welcome to this video. First of all, I wanna say I know that this video is about two weeks late and I'm sorry. It was originally supposed to go up on the 1st of April, but I just got very, very busy and I was not able to finish it. So I apologize for that. I'm going to do my best to get back on track after this. But I have been knowing for a long time that I need more summer clothing. I really only have one shirt for summer, so I decided that I was going to sew myself uh, another summer shirt, and I had a climate action coming up, and by the time this video is out, it will be in the past, but I can't remember if I do mention it in the video. So if I do mention it in the video, then it will be in the future tense, because I filmed the video before I'm filming this. Hush! Hi, bird! So I decided that I was going to make a new shirt waist for this climate action because it was going to be unseasonably hot on that day. Um, and, you know, after that, it's gone back to being normal, kind of chilly April. But on that day, it was quite warm. So I decided I was going to make a new shirt waist. So for my, what I'm deeming my, my climate action, <laughs> my climate action shirt waist, I decided that I would copy this antique one. Uh, and I really, really like this shirt. It's very flattering. And what I especially like is the back. It's got this fitted back and it has ties around the waist on the inside to keep it fitted. And I really like how this looks. So you kind of get like a, a bodice effect in the back and then a shirt waist effect in the front. And for my purple shirt waist that you'll see by my sleeve that I'm wearing now, it also has a fitted back. And I copied that fitted back from this shirt waist. What I did was I laid out some butcher paper on the floor over a carpet and laid the shirt waist out on top of it and then went in with a pin and just pricked it th uh, through the shirt waist and through the paper along all of the seams. And that gave me the shape of all of these back pieces that I could then cut out and use as a pattern. I uh, learned that trick from my friend Sarah Chrisman. Very, very good trick. So, I decided that I was gonna copy this shirt waist. And I've already copied this shirt waist once before. Last summer, I made this version of the shirt waist. And it's kind of a Franken pattern. I used the um, 1894 shirt waist pattern from Truly Victorian for the base. But I gave it the fitted back that the original has. And the uh, shirt waist pattern from Truly Victorian has this yoke cut down in a V and I uh, flattened it out to match the original. And then for the sleeves, I used the Truly Victorian 1908 countryside blouse pattern. So my Franken pattern waist. On the whole, I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, I tried to get a little creative here with the yoke, and I decided that I wanted to have the stripes running horizontally. I made a little bit of a mistake cutting them out, and they're kind of running uh, slightly upwards, which is not my favorite, but I didn't have enough fabric to fix it, and it's not the end of the world. Also, I wish... Focus? Okay, I'll take a step back. I wish that I had cut this front part a little bit bigger so I had a, would have a little bit more to gather down there because I think these gathers are a little bit flat. But other than that, sorry Maria, other than that, oh, other than that, but other than that, I really love how this shirt waist came out. So I am going to pretty much replicate the process on the next one. I started off by cutting out the back, and the pattern pieces are without seam allowance, so I simply traced around them with a friction pen that will disappear when I iron the fabric, and then I cut out the pieces a little bit larger than the lines, so I'll sew along the lines and I won't have to worry about measuring out any exact seam allowance. Next, I set about overlocking all of these pieces by machine to keep them from fraying. I should have done this by hand to be 
incredibly accurate, but I just did not have the time for that. And technically, this isn't inaccurate. The overlocker was invented in 1881. Now, it was not used very commonly. I have never seen an example of overlocking on any antique clothing, but technically, it was a technology that existed in the 1890s. I then sewed all of the back pieces together. Then it came time to cut out the front, and I used the exact same technique for cutting out the front as I used for cutting out the back. And I mentioned earlier that I think that my first attempt of recreating the shirtwaist doesn't have enough gathering in the front, so I made sure to cut out this front portion longer than I did last time, so I would have more fabric to gather down. Then followed a lot of overlocking and sewing together. All right, I'm now going to gather down the, where is it, the yoke or the front to fit the yoke. And I'm going to use silk thread to do that because I want to. Having gathered the front part down to fit the yoke, I then set about sewing them together. It was then time to pin the shoulder seams closed and stitch them together. All right, I've gotten the front pinned closed. Um, I've just got, I've, just pinned in a temporary tape. I'm going to put in one that just hooks around the waist so I don't have to bother with tying it. But now I'm going to trace this to get that curved shape that I want. And I might actually not curve it quite as much. I might actually just kind of make more of a V shape and not do that. But yeah. Next, I made the button placket and neckline binding. And to do this, I simply traced the curve of the neckline and then widened that till it was about two inches thick. I then sewed all of these pieces together end to end so they made one long strip. Then 
Then came the step of ironing all the seams open. I don't often show this step on my channel, but I do do it and it is very important. I then sat down to pin this placket facing sort of piece on, but I made a mistake. What I tried to do was to just pin this on to the shirt and then fold it over the raw edge. What I actually needed to do was make a second one of these strips and then sew them together long ways and then use that to sort of sandwich the raw edge together. So this was a lot of frustration on my part before I broke down and looked at the one that I had made previously and seen how I <laughs> checked on how I did this. So I ended up having to do a lot of unpicking that night because I had stupidly sewn this strip on already, even though it was incorrect and I knew it was incorrect. So always check twice. And if you're having trouble visualizing what I was supposed to do, and I don't blame you because I did not explain it very clearly, never fear, that will be covered later on. By this point in filming, I have realized my mistake and am working on rectifying it. So you're going to see me now tracing out the placket facing thing that I already made so that I can make another one. I then sewed these pieces together to make another long strip. I then pinned those two long strips together, right sides facing each other, and then sewed them up lengthwise so that the two long strips became one slightly wider, equally long strip. I was now able to affix the button placket facing thing. And I want to apologize, this video is going to cut off sort of abruptly, and that's because my phone died, and once the video picks back up again, I will be in a different place uh, in the project, not physically a different place, but just a different place in the project, um, because I did not realize that my phone had died. So, yeah, I'm sorry about that. So when the video picked up again, I had gotten the button placket facing thingy on, and I had begun to stitch the lace around the collar.
right, the collar's on and the lace is on the collar and it's not perfect. It's especially weird down here, although it'll get a little bit better when I put on the buttons. If I could, I would take it off and redo it, but this fabric is so thin and I've already had to take this off once and redo it that if I were to take it off again, it would just kind of destroy the fabric. So I've just got to live with it. It'll be fine. It's time to work on these sleeves. And for the sleeves, I used the pattern from the Truly Victorian 1908 Countryside Blouse. Cutting out the sleeves, it was over to the sewing machine to overlock them. I then pinned the sleeves together. After pinning them together, I did the logical thing and sewed them together. After sewing everything together, it was back over to the ironing board to press the seams flat. I then cut out the cuffs. It's just a simple rectangle, and this pattern was supposed to have a sleeve that opened up and had a buttoned cuff, but I didn't deem that to be necessary, so I just cut out a simple rectangle for the cuff. I then sewed the cuffs together in a cuffy sort of way. I folded each rectangle in half and sewed it up along the open end and then sewed two of the rectangles to each other along the long end. And you'll see what I mean in the video. After running gathering threads around the wrist end of the sleeve, I gathered the sleeve down and put it into the cuff. I then began the incredibly fiddly process of stitching the cuff to the sleeve. Finally, it was time to put the sleeves onto the shirt, and I did this in my usual way of doing sleeves. I pinned and sewed on the bottom part that doesn't get gathered first, then I came back and gathered up the part that needs to be gathered, pinned that in, and then sewed it on to the shirt.
And at this point, I was drawing perilously close to my deadline of the climate action, and I didn't film after doing this because I didn't have time. So things like doing the buttonholes, putting on the buttons, putting on the uh, waist tie thing and hemming it, did not get filmed. Luckily, they're relatively straightforward things to do, so I don't think that you guys are really gonna suffer much for not seeing them. so much for watching. A huge thank you to Mary Royal, Kit Cap Stitch, and Sandra White for sponsoring this channel on Patreon. If you would also like to sp sponsor this channel on Patreon, then there's a link in the description below. There will also be a link to my Instagram down there if you feel like following me there. No hard feelings if you don't want to or can't do either of those things. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you'll stick around. Please don't remember to hit like, subscribe, turn on the bell notification, thing and what's the other one leave a comment they ah, there's so many steps these days youtube used to be simpler so don't forget to do all those things and i hope to see you next time bye bye